I do realize that I have disappointed some of you. It's all right. It's all right. You came expecting to meet your new associate pastor, and he's not here. But that's not why you came. We know that. That's not why you came. It's not about the priest. It's about something far, someone far more profound. But I do take responsibility. Probably two months ago now, when we were anticipating in this foursome, soon-to-be foursome cluster, the change that was upon especially two of the four parishes, <laughs> and I said to Father Bierman, I said, you know, it would really be helpful if as soon as possible come July, the both of you could be at all three Masses in Blue Earth and Winnebago, just as soon as possible, just to see them, introduce yourselves, and make them feel better for losing a resident pastor, which isn't going to be a bad thing, but it would really be important. And Father Bierman, I could tell, agreed, but I could also tell he wasn't convinced, and so I turned up the volume. You've got to do this. And he said, well, I guess I'll have to find somebody to have the masses in Fairmont and East Chain. I said, well, we do that, you know, sometimes. And then he said, well, maybe I can find some old retired pastor. <laughs> then he looked at me. He said, could you rephrase that and maybe we could work something out? <laughs> I don't... I don't know which ones of you for sure are maybe guests and visitors here. We probably have some, summertime especially. A little more free time for some people, some vacationing going on. You all probably have your own favorite place to visit. It might be some place close to home, pretty simple. And it might be some place maybe farther away. And one of the places through the years that I always enjoyed visiting, and still do, but not as often as in the past, is northern Minnesota, the, 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 that road along the Lake Superior north of Duluth, Grand Marais, and the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, and the camping, and the campfires. And you all probably, many of you, have seen Split Rock Lighthouse. You know, as a kid, I was fascinated. But still, got to stop there whenever I'm in that area. And I can never see that lighthouse without thinking of a story. This story. <laughs> Once upon a time, a group of people built a lighthouse to save people from the dangerous ocean. Everybody who joined the group knew that they committed themselves to going out and helping people in peril. But after a while, they decided that there was no reason for all of them to go out and risk their lives. Some would stay home and staff the lighthouse. And then, after a while, they decided they should all stay home and keep the light bright and let people find their own way. And then after a little while, the group was not quite sure they wanted these bedraggled people dripping water on their carpet. And so they dimmed the light a little. And then after a while, they decided they needed a new carpet and maybe an elevator. <laughs> and nobody noticed when the light went out. And then, quietly, somebody went out and changed the sign from lighthouse to clubhouse. Oh. Could that ever happen to a parish? Not, not St. John Vianney. <laughs> Could that happen to a parish? It's like a love that is passionate and pure for a while. 
But then, with the passage of time and erosion and corrosion, it loses fervor and even interest. When the light went out, nobody noticed. The, the 72 that Jesus sent out on mission were filled with zeal. They knew who they were, and they knew why they were sent, and they knew what they had to offer, and they were enthused about it. You might want to keep this passage to carry with you. It's a picture of a day in the life of the first disciples of Christ. It's a description of what you might call the embryo of the church. It wasn't born until Pentecost, but it's, it's like an episode in your family when you know that you're moving from adolescence to adulthood. It's a real maturity. The gospel is a snapshot that captures disciples becoming missionaries. Did you notice that? And the called becoming the sent. Or a vocation becoming a mission. I noticed there are what you might say are six ingredients in this process. The first is the sending part. This is not a call story. That was earlier. We've all got a call story. This is a sending story. Number two, there's a part about the role of the missionary. Oh, I love this. The missionaries are not little saviors. They're not little messiahs. You know who I always think of? John the Baptist. He's got to be everybody's patron. Do you remember when he said, I'm nobody's messiah? <laughs> I can almost hear his tone of voice. I'm nobody's Messiah. I must decrease. He must increase. That was them. Did you hear the way it said that Jesus sent them in pairs to every place he intended to visit? They were just the advanced people. This is the second part of the episode, the role of the sent. And number three, there's that warning. I'm sending you like lambs in the midst of wolves. There will be opposition. If you're not aware of the spiritual warfare, you're probably losing. We know that. That's number three, the warning. Number four, there's the counsel about how to, how to go. Travel light. Nothing weighs nothing, mountain climbers. Travel light. Number five, here's the message. The kingdom of God is at hand. We've already got enough people saying the world is going to heck. We got an, already have enough people who curse more than bless. You know, we have already got enough people whose only interest and counsel and passion is this world. The kingdom of God is at hand. There's a countless ways of saying that, announcing that, em uh, embodying that. That's the message. That's the kind of like the fifth ingredient. And finally, the sixth. Here's the forgotten part, I find. It says the 72 returned joyfully. Don't forget the Jesus who sent you. And don't forget the community of faith, the church from which you have been sent. Return regularly. I don't, it's preaching to, preaching to the choir. Return regularly. We need, for the sake of the spiritual life, for the sake of the vitality of the mission, we need a faith community. We need a prayer group. We need a support group. We need kindred spirits. We need the church. We need a parish like St. John Vianney. Somebody to retreat to. It's part of what we do here when we come. We come to receive the Word in Eucharist and the Holy Communion of one another. You know, the, the group to whom I can say, this is what happened in my life this week. And how God can speak a word of confirmation just like he did to them. I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Can you think of the last time you were very aware of the Lord confirming you like that? 
He was confirming their mission. I noticed the good at your hands and evil, evil being overcome by my power in you. Have you felt that? Uh, Behold, I have given you power, he said, to tread upon the full force of the enemy and nothing will harm you. How uh, comforting that is, isn't it, to hear that? Go back to this. You might want to keep this passage from Luke. How comforting that confirmation of Christ is in the beginning and now. Behold, I have given you power to tread upon the full force of the enemy. So here we are again. Uh, St. John Vianney Lighthouse. (laughs) With this mission for people in peril. To the word, we bring an open heart, a willingness of spirit. We've returned to the lighthouse, not to live here, but to receive and to leave with new purpose and zeal.